Hello, hope everyone is doing well. So this is going to be my really short uh, version of typography, which is basically map lettering. Um, so this is like the essentials. Um, so one of the things um, that you can do if you're curious about it is actually just stop and think about it. Um, whether you're in your car looking at your GPS device, or you're looking at Google Maps, or when you pick up your next hiking map, um, or any map that you see, begin to just look at the lettering. I know right now I'm sort of obsessed because I've been, you know, creating notes and thinking about this. Even when I'm in my car, I'm looking at how my GPS on the screen um, is highlighting certain words at certain um, in certain locations, at certain zoom levels, right, at small and large scales and how it changes. Um, so I'm going to sort of talk about these types of things. So when we think about the essentials, I have like these, they have them numbered out here, right? So the task of selecting fonts and the font styles. Placing or positioning labels in text map is traditionally called map letter, okay? So when you're thinking about lettering, letter, lettering selection has to do with choosing fonts and font styles. So you've got to actually think about what you choose. Um, for the most part, you really don't want two different types of fonts. Um, and then, you know, keep in mind like waterways and uh, lakes and, and sometimes some maps will have all natural features and they'll italicize them. Remember all fonts are not free. Most fonts will, uh, I'm sorry, most maps will, as I mentioned, include two fonts, a serif and a sans serif. Font size smaller than six should almost never be. Bottom line is don't use something if someone can't read it. All the lettering should be legible. If not, you need to modify your map in some way or remove the lettering. You, you don't put lettering on a map that someone won't be able to see or understand. So for example, when we think about fonts, um, Google Maps uses Product Sans and Roboto in, in their map uh, app, basically. So they use the product stands is for bigger fonts and Roboto is for the smaller fonts. So the top here is product product stands and the bottom is Roboto. So, you know, the thing is, is maybe you don't care what Google uses, but next time you pick up a map, stop and think about what kind of font are they using. So also number six here, what is the intellectual hierarchy of the features I want to label? So that's the other interesting thing about when you pick up a map, that the, the lettering is at different sizes. It's a hierarchical thing that uh, creates importance on the map. And of course, you can go ahead and do whatever you want, or you may follow sort of cartographic practice. And in cartographic practice, you know, the country, for example, might be 16 point, the state 12 point, major cities might also be 12 point, but they'll these two obviously are capitalized. So you could deal with hierarchy by making something capitalized, which makes it more important. And then something of the same font, um, or maybe you use a, a different type of font, but at the same size. And, and just by doing these little subtle things, we've now created a hierarchy. Country, state, major city, minor city, and town, each one having a different style um, and uh, size to them. So. You know, what happens when we don't do that? So this is, for example, like a map we might create. In our first year GIS class, we just turn the lettering on and voila, and make some lettering. So we're, we think it's cool, we just leave it. But what if at that moment you were thinking about hierarchy and that all places are not the same, right? So you could, you know, go ahead and begin to think about labeling lakes with the larger italicized. The countries have the, the biggest uh, font, and it looks like they're using a serif font here. Um, the towns look, uh, I'm sorry, the state names are smaller than the countries. Looks like they're using a sans serif, and they're also capitalized, right? So the states and the countries are capitalized, um, and they so they've created this hierarchy as, as the cities are smaller, Right, smaller than a state as a whole, right? So that these cities are all of the same size. Size, big difference between looking at this and looking at this. So when I see this, it kind of makes me a little nauseous. When I see this, I'm seeing the hierarchy. So this is this is what you want to be thinking about. 
Number seven, learn about lettering and hierarchy, not from listening to me, just next time you pick up an atlas, next time you pick up a good map, next time you look on Google uh, Streets, think about the hierarchy that people are using. For example, what size lettering does the USGS quads use? Right, so here's examples of the USGS quads. Have you ever thought what is their template? What kind of lettering do they use? They also use two different fonts. I've recently stylized some uh, USGS quads in uh, QGIS, and I've learned a lot about what, uh, how, how they stylize their maps, basically. So it is important, generally, unless you're trying to be fancy and do something completely different than others are doing, um, is to follow mapping lettering conventions. So here's some of the conventions. You want to prioritize the position of a point label features. So above right, we'll talk about this more in detail. So typically if you have a, a, a dot that's representing the city, the best place to put it is in above it and to the right. Um, then the next best place is below and to the right. So below the circle on the right and then above and to the left and then below to the left. So we'll talk in more detail about these. Visually center and increase the letter spacing of labels within area features to reinforce their size and shape. So notice here is a perfect example of that. They didn't squish in Lake Michigan in a really short font, right? They actually put it across the geographic feature. Same with the way that they label the, the countries. They made them a little wider. And you also will see that when you look at um, like forests and stuff, sometimes they'll stretch out the text to follow. So here's an example. I'm not exactly sure what that says, but it's, it's covering a large area. It's showing you a big geographic feature. They typically don't, you don't see that a lot on some Google Maps and things like that. They don't, that's not a style that you see a lot on online maps. Use uppercase to label area features. So if we go back to the USGS, this is some sort of area feature. It's in capital letters. Um, these lakes aren't in capital letters, which is fine, but it does have a, a capital starting each of the words. And then this, for example, on the USGS quads, they actually do use uh, capital letters for a geographic feature. Label water features blue and in a, using an italic font. Often a serif is used, so with a little sort of fancy squirrel at the end of the font, basically, right? So here it looks like they're using a serif. If you look at the USGS quads, yeah, they're using a serif here, and it's blue lettering, right? So you might start noticing that. Hmm, how are, how are people lettering water, like places with water? So like right on this example map I have, they're using blue. And then also on this example map, they're also using blue. Distinguish ranked categories by at least two points when labeling sizes, um, labeling sizes basically. So what they mean is what I was talking about in the beginning, that you don't go from 16 to 15 or 12 to 11, you go 16 to 12, 12 to 10, 10 to eight, right? So by twos. Don't rotate labels upside down. Labels should not be smaller than six points. If necessary, use one serif and one sans serif font, but do not use more than one serif font on the map. So typically you just want two fonts on your map. One is a serif, which you might use for geographic features and water, and then the other one will be a sans serif. So a question I often get is, well, how much map lettering do I need to add to my map? Because a lot of us do thematic maps. Like think of the, map, the maps we've been doing for our, our labs. You know, and in most cases, those labs are fine without having like lettering that we see on some of these natural feature maps and these quad maps, right? We don't always need lettering. But if you do put some lettering on your map, the goal is to just not make it cluttery or messy. Keep it really neat and clean and be sort of consistent about what is getting lettered. And the other thing is lettering takes a long time. Software is not good at lettering. A lot of what people, what, a lot of what you see on maps and why it looks so neat and clean is because people put it there themselves or they move it. They have the software 
do a first run where the software will just put it there, and then they'll import it into another software and move it around. That's why it always looks so good, because there's a cartographer who actually is moving things around. If, you, if it looks really messy, and you have a choice between leaving lettering, because you want some lettering, versus being messy, you probably, on a thematic type of map, you should probably remove it. So when I was driving uh, the other day, my I was telling you earlier about my GPS I'm in my car, and I thought it was interesting. Um, you know, this was before I, I was coming to class. I saw the, the blue Delaware River, but notice they didn't kind of put it along the river. They just sort of fit it in a space. I guess in that moment with the way that they were lettering the uh, streets, they could not uh, put it long ways. But notice, you know, nowadays when you look at any sort of car device or you know whether it be Google or Apple they all have their own style of doing things the other thing that I thought was interesting about this is that the roads are actually black font with yellow around the edges when they're following a yellow line and when they're following a light one uh, light sorry a white line they have black with white around them so these little subtle things that when you begin to kind of you know looking at maps you'll notice the last thing I wanted to talk about, which I think is really interesting, is that, you know, down the road when you're thinking about your final project, it's probably not such a bad idea, and it, it may not be as detailed as this, but you might want to have a design brief. Like, notice this design brief, it talks about the roads, I think is interesting, Route 1, Route 2, Route 3, Route 4, and it shows you what the symbols are. It shows you how it's going to, what font and it's going to use for river names. It kind of shows you what it's going to look like for lake names, for bay names, for sea names. And not only that, but it also will then show you the type of font and, and then the size that they're using. So the last thing is just it shows you, you know, it, also the town symbols that it's going to use. So it's not a bad idea. It'll, it'll help you kind of think through it and think through the different colors and sizes that you're going to use for your map. Uh, that's it for now. We're, we're, we're going to you know, catch up. Um, I'll talk more about um, lettering during our lecture. I have a lot more detailed information about, you know, how to letter water, how to let, letter places, and then also some of that information, more information about where the best places are to place letters on a map. Have a good day. Take care.